Yeah, not at all. I mean, that's how that's what Floyd is. He uh, picks you apart. He's the best defensive player in the game. Has the fastest hands. Knows how to knows how to control the ring at his pace. Um, I told anybody who wanted to listen, including you guys, that Mayweather was going to dominate this. I was a little surprised he didn't get the knockout, but that was Manny's fault, not Floyd. Manny just didn't he didn't press the action at all. Didn't take a chance. And uh, but the, the overall result that didn't surprise me in the least. I, I thought Floyd would dominate him, and did. When you watch Pacquiao and seen him in the past, did he appear to be a guy who was injured? No, not at all. He didn't. Uh, I mean, he didn't, it's not like he didn't throw his right hand. It's not like he fought with one arm, which uh, I've seen people do in the past, like they'll tear a bicep or something during mm-hmm. a fight. And, but no, he, I mean, he threw he threw with both hands. He didn't throw enough, but uh, <laughs> I don't think I don't think the injury has anything to do with it. To be Wait, honest, I think. Well, then with the outcome, and you hear, okay, he needs surgery. He's going to be out a year. Do you mm-hmm. say, hmm, I would like to see him fight healthy, or do you think a similar outcome? No, nah, it wouldn't change it. wouldn't change it at all. It might be a little bit closer, but no. I, I Floyd, Floyd beats him every year. If they play 10 times, Floyd beats him 10 times. That's just the way it is. It's the way Styles are. It's like, you know, the old adage of Styles make fights. So I don't think I don't think maybe, I don't think Pacquiao has a style that can beat Floyd. And I'm pretty honest with you, I, wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't want to see it again. Uh, that was so boring, and, and that just... I have no desire to see this two guys fight again. Right, I was going to say, I mean, obviously they're talking about doing it again, and uh, obviously Mayweather said he would be down for that, and you just said you wouldn't want to do it. Do you think the public, though, would pay again to see this fight? No. Uh-uh. Not no. the way that they uh-uh. did this time, but it was, do you think it would still be a very profitable night? Yeah, maybe like a you know a half-price special or something. Maybe you're going to pay <laughs> 50 bucks instead of 100 I mean, of course, Floyd's going to want to fight again. Another $150 million, $180 million. He wouldn't want to fight again for that, you know? Yeah, and I mean, does he say he wants to fight again because he knows that the next payday is not going to be anywhere near that? So he figures, if I'm going to fight one more time, I might as well do it for the biggest payday I can get? Sure, sure. Why not? Dave, it's all about the money with Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And Dave, you know, the one thing is you wrote in the paper, you know, if you want to blame someone for the lack of entertainment in this fight, blame Pacquiao. If he was more active and he fought more like a pack, because I, I thought he was less aggressive than I've seen him. I'm not saying that I thought he was hurt, just less aggressive that he, you know, could have done more. If that was the case, do you think that he could have broke through and scored more and maybe made it a little? Cause there are some people out there, not many, that think, you know, that uh, the fight was a little closer than uh, some people indicated. But 116, 112 means, you know, hey, something flip flops here or there that that fight's a little different. No, not buying it. Sorry, <laughs> I just I think Floyd just dominated. Floyd controlled the fight. He just did what he wanted to do. Manny could have tried, and if that would have been the case, I think he would have got knocked out. Yeah, you know, if he had just he would have had to have taken a gamble, probably press the action. But if he gets more aggressive, then he's going to leave an opening, and when he leaves an opening, Floyd would have capitalized on it. Yeah, and obviously, you know, uh, Mayweather. And again, you shouldn't be surprised with the way Mayweather fought. He fought his fight. I thought Manny. Right. Got a little bit away from what he typically does, but that's what Floyd does for you, and that's what makes him so great. I guess he's now forty-eight and zero. Uh, he's got one opportunity now to get uh, one more opportunity to fight. Do you think he will go over though and fight more? He's got one fight left on the contract. Do you think we'll see him more than that one time? Uh, if you see him the second time, it'll be against Pacquiao for the money. Otherwise, I think he walks away. He's been talking about this for a while that. When his you know contract is up, he's going to be done. Hmm. That he's kind of tired of boxing, and does wants to do other things. And um, I, I, I kind of have a feeling he's, he's kind of burned out a little bit. But if someone's going to throw you know a boatload of money at him to fight Pacquiao one more time, I think he'll fight. But that would be his final. That would be his final fight, and that would be the only fight that would take him past the contract. I think. Uh, Dave Weinberg from the Press of Atlantic City. You can read that full column over uh, at pressofatlanticcity.com or uh, do it old school. Pick up the newspaper, man. How about that? Do it old school there. Dave also covers the Eagles for the paper, and as you tweeted today, Chip Kelly is a lot of things but never struck me as a racist as he's being kind of thrown under the bus today by his former player, LaShawn McCoy. Is this sour grapes from McCoy? Uh, is there any evidence in that locker room to suggest to you that uh, Chip Kelly rather have white gentlemen in that room? Uh, not to me. I mean, I never even gave it a second thought. I never even like considered skin color to be a factor when he's you know, choosing players. I know he caught a lot of a lot of flack and criticism for, criticism for keeping Riley Cooper after his uh, racist taunt at the at the Kenny at the Kenny Chesney concert, but. 
I just think he thinks that Cooper is good enough to help his team. Maybe he didn't have a tremendous year this year, granted, but he's still a, a better blocker than what people give him credit for. And he kind of gives those the little things that people may not notice as a wide receiver. I mean, I I certainly don't think he should have cut Deshaun Jackson. I don't think he should have traded Deshaun McCoy. I've gone on the record with that. But um, I just don't, I don't think race had anything to do with either of those moves. I think Chip has a very big ego, and he wants things done Chip's way. And maybe Deshaun and Deshaun necessarily didn't want to follow in his in his, uh, his directives or whatever, and uh, that's the reason that he got rid of them. I think I don't think it had anything to do with race, though. Dave, the draft is over, free agency is over. Obviously, some minor things could happen from here on out. But have the Eagles satisfied you with their off season in terms of filling most of their needs? Yeah, everything except offensive line. I, I would have liked to have seen them draft one. I know they signed a couple of uh, rookie free agents, and but the fact that uh, they cut uh, Todd Herman and then and it looks like Evan Mathis might be at the door too. I'm not a big. Uh, I'm not sold on Alan Barbary or Matt Tobin being able to step into those guard spots. So, but other than that, I thought they upgraded the secondary with some of the moves they made. I thought wide receiver was a need. They obviously addressed that too with their first round pick. And by signing Miles Austin, um, they got DeMarco Murray to replace LaShawn and Ryan Matthews, too. So if, uh, as long as Sam Bradford's knee can hold up, and uh, I think they I think they made some good moves, though. I, I, I was kind of impressed with, the, with what they did in the offseason. Do you, do you think that there's going to be any problem with Bradford playing in week number one? Mm, to be honest, I don't know. Um, I know he's not going to be doing much in the mini camps that are coming up. Uh, they say he's going to be ready for training camp, but I mean, who knows for sure? Uh, I think barring like setbacks and if he you know continues to make the progress that he's made, I think he'll be ready week one. But uh, I don't think we'll really know until they open the season and you see him out there at quarterback whether he's ready or not. Yeah, I mean it seems like a lot of people just anticipate that he'll be ready, but I wonder if there's any concern yeah. at all uh, whether or not he's going to be ready for the first week. And keep in mind. What if he doesn't play in any preseason games? I mean, you just throw him out there in week number one after he hasn't played in almost, what, two years now? Right, right. Yeah, you would think he would need some sort of action in the preseason just to get the rust off a little bit. That's that's kind of a tall order to expect him to just walk out there on, the week, on opening day and perform up to his potential without any, uh, without any practices or whatever. And that would be... I would be kind of hard pressed to to think that he could come and just come in off the bench cold and deliver like that. Yeah, you wonder how they would play that. I mean, obviously he was brought here to be the starter. Do you think? Uh, right. I mean, he was brought here for start. You don't think there's going to be there's going to be an open competition like he had his first year here, do you? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. I I think he brought Sam in here to be the number one guy. Um, he's very comfortable with having Sanchez in there if need be, but I don't think it's like an open thing. Open competition like where there was with like uh, Vic and Foles. Uh, no, I think this is Bradford's job as long as he can stay healthy and and prove that he's up to it. Uh, Dave Weinberg, the columnist, the Eagles writer, and the boxing writer from the press of Atlantic City dot com, and of course uh, the Eagles, uh, they will uh, get their training camps, uh, their rookie camps start tomorrow. They have a three little rookie day window Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And uh, one of those guys is Holy Spirit's Joe Sarnias. We golfed yesterday, Mm -hmm. uh, Dave, and I said, uh, you know, I think that was as bad as I was. That might have been the best round I have ever played. Believe it or not, I I mean, oh, okay, you didn't do bad. You had some good shots. Yeah, exactly. I said we used a couple. That's the most shots I think we've ever used of mine, or even contemplated using, which I was very happy about. (laughs) Uh, But we had talked about Joe Sarnies from from Holy Spirit. How much of a long shot is it for a guy like that who just gets an invitation? to a camp to, to uh, get be around here in August? It's it's uh, pretty long odds. Um, if they were that, uh, if they liked him that much, they probably would have signed him as one of those 16 free agents. But that's not to say that it's not, you know, it's not possible. If Joe comes in there and, uh, and has a pretty good uh, three-day camp, there's a, there's, every, there's, a, there's a possibility that they can invite him back for the next mini camp at least because the other 16 guys that they signed, maybe you know one guy decides he doesn't want to play football anymore. Maybe one guy just doesn't do very well. Somebody gets injured. So you never know. I mean, the odds are pretty long, but it's not impossible. I mean, he, he does have a shot if he can if he can um, if he can play well these next three days. I, I think he does have a chance. All right, uh, we'll keep our eye on Joe as he uh, uh, signed with the Eagles. We had Gordon Hill with the Chargers, and then Max mm-hmm. Vallis has was, was drafted by the Raiders. I guess Vallis drafted has the best shot of the three uh, to hang on there and, and do something. Right, right. Yeah, they don't usually cut draft picks. That's, that's pretty rare. Um, he would really have to struggle. And I know that they he's really raw because he, he, he still has two years of eligibility left in college. So 
I think they view him as more of a long-term project, and they, they just kind of have to teach him the defensive system to make from you know being essentially a sophomore at Virginia all the way up to the NFL. You're talking about a 20-year-old kid playing against 30-year-old men, and that's uh, that's no easy task. As far as Gordon Hill is concerned, I think he might have a chance to just on because of his uh, aggressiveness, his aggressive style of play. I think he might have a shot to stick on special teams because they always look for the bottom of the roster guys. They're looking for guys who can do both, who can play some defense or offense, but especially can contribute on uh, you know the kickoffs and kickoff returns and that kind of stuff. So if he can make an impact in those areas, I think he might have a shot at making the roster. All right, Dave Weinberg, everybody here, finishing his uh, 22nd season covering the Eagles for the press. So, obviously, uh, this year, this offseason, a lot of changes and a lot of different things, maybe the most in Dave's tenure, but we'll see how it all shakes out when uh, the mini camps and training camps get going. Dave Weinberg from the Press of Atlantic City. Thanks, Dave. No, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it.